Good morning, Mass. Oh, wait, this is Zelda speaking. Welcome, everybody. I'm me in the game, and let's hop into Let's Play Legend of Zelda Min Minish Cap. Uh, this has been coming for about seven and a half years now, so it's really good to finally get this going. And uh, let's just start the gameplay here. Oh, goodness me, Princess Zelda. Did you sneak out of the castle and come all this way alone? The minister is sure to be worried about you. You know how he gets. Oh, don't worry about him. He'll be fine. Where's Link? The whole town is bustling for the annual Pecori Festival. I thought he and I might go together. Would you mind terribly? Who the hell talks like that? Oh, is that what you're here for? Well, Link was up late helping me last night, and he's still asleep. It's like 8.30 in the morning, you can tell by how sunny it is. It's at minimum 8.30. If this is in the summertime, it's probably at least 11 o'clock in the afternoon. Just sleeping there all nice and tidy. And here we go, the gameplay has begun. Now this is one of my favorite Zelda games. I, it's not like any of them aren't really. Uh, this was the first game that I had finished with my brother. Um, it's, it's got a lot of good memories. Princess Zelda is here, she'd like to know if you join her at the festival. Yeah, of course. Yes, after all, the festival only comes once a year. Go, have fun. And while you're there, you can do me a favor. I finished making the sword for the minister of the Hyrule Castle, and I'd like you to deliver it for him. And there's some Tom Brady shit going on right there. And we have the sword. But you know what? This is the job, being the smith's grandson and everything. The two of you may be childhood friends, but remember, she's the princess of Hyrule. Watch over her and don't let anything happen. I, I'm not going to follow along with any of the voice. There is going to be no consistency there. Uh, just because I, I, I'm i not even going to read half of it, let alone play along with it. But you know what? As Link's been growing up and everything, he's seen Grandpa Smith over here. And he's like, you know, I think you put some money here in the chest. How much? 20 bucks. And that's what Grandpa gets. Got a Grandpa Smith once. Keyword had. Link, over here! Yeah, we, we kind of know where the town is. Well, not necessarily. So... Outside of where she is, we have this over here, and then stuff over here. Once we get a sword, we can go ahead and cut that down. We can actually explore the rest of it, but it's a very linear, much like a lot of Elder Zelda games. But uh, one of the great things about Minish Cap is it's, after a while, and I've, I've played this game probably about three times in the last two months, um, is it's very fast. If you know what you're doing, like, there's enough of it that you can go around and, you know, kind of explore everything and have a true understanding of learning it. Uh, but after you know what to do a couple times, it just, it kind of becomes what it is. A storyteller, we should stop and listen to, oh hey, I wonder over there, it's a squirrel. Where is the headmaster she needs? Her riddle and... So the Pecori are real. My father always told me they were. Oh, look at that. Yes. Ay, ay, ay. It's it's a lot of beginning dialogue, and it's not the greatest. But this is one of my uh, favorite parts here at the beginning. Uh, we basically she wins a raffle, more or less. You know, it's it's Zelda. She's a princess. I don't even know how in the world she's allowed to participate in this, but she is, and she won something. And so she gets to choose between a heart container, 200 rupees, which, I mean, for the princess it's not worth anything, or a wooden sword. Now, it's early on in a Zelda game. Which one do you think it is? Because it's for us. This is how we get it. Yes, she picks the sword. Uh, it's kind of disappointing looking at it when you know that that heart container is there, 200 rupees, but... In all actuality, the sword is what we really need at the moment. And in this game, a lot like others, uh, it does operate off of heart pieces as opposed to heart containers, if you haven't played it before. Uh, and they're, it's, they're not the hardest to get, they're pretty easy. Um, one of the more annoying and difficult aspects of this game, which involves heart pieces later on, 
uh, we'll get into once it comes up. That won't be for a little while. It's, uh, yeah, it's probably the worst. But now that we have this equipped and everything, we see everything here. These are from the Wind Tribe. This is that one kid from uh, Wind Waker who kept running across, throwing his bed and everything. Somebody get him a goddamn Kleenex, please. For the love of all that is holy. And here we are at Hyrule Field and everything. And boom! Yeah, she just stand in front of the business scrub, get shot. They were saying a Deku Scrub had been hassling all the passerbys. Link, do something about it, otherwise we can't get back to the castle. If only we had some way to defend ourselves against these nuts of- Huh. I, I, I honestly don't know. Oh, hey, that did the trick. Shocker. Oh, please forgive me, sir. I heard that there was a festival, and I came into town hoping to hawk my wares. Unfortunately, we scrubs have a tendency to spit nuts when we speak. Never get one got scared and walk, ran away, and no one would buy anything. It's, it's, it's a terrible place to do business. I'm gonna go back to my cave. And he's gone. I actually feel a little sorry for that business scrub, but that nut hurt. I'm not gonna say anything, Zelda. I'm not gonna say anything. Alright, here we go. Let's continue going northwards to the castle. Anyway, I think this is one of the few games where we get introduced to the big bad early on. Because this is uh, right when we're about to get introduced to the bad guy for the game. Uh, it's not Ganon. Uh, Ganon, I don't even think, gets mentioned, which is nice. I, I really like that with the Capcom games, because they kind of exist over in their own timeline, as it were. Um, despite the correlations and everything going on with Four Swords Adventures uh, for the GameCube. But, you know, honestly, this this game does its own thing pretty well. Legend has it that long ago the Pecori gave us this blade, and whoever wins this competition earns the honor of touching it. Ah, uh, the castle theme music from A Link to the Past. The Atea champion of the competition, you may approach the blade. Because nobody ever did a background check on this guy. He's got, like, beady eyes and everything. He's got this cape. He's... <laughs> Almost elf looking. <laughs> to think that things would go this well. <laughs> the Pecori blade in the bound chest, spoken of in Hyrulean lore, Helian lore. This chest must hold that which I seek. I'll relieve you of its contents now. You say what now? You know, because when he did that to the first two, the second two should definitely approach him. That's not dangerous whatsoever. So he blasts that off, breaks the sword, and essentially opens the chest. And out come all of the evils that have been sealed away previously. Honestly, this is... It's kind of a nice concept how they do that. Who are you and why are you doing this? The princess with the mystic aura. The power that is gifted to the people of Hy Hyrule still flows within the veins of the ladies of its royal family. Interesting. I'll leave you now only because you cause me trouble later. That'll never do. And boom! It's like, I'm gonna go ahead and defend her! No. It's this little sword and everything that just knocks him out of the way, and boom, she's turned into stone. And that's the end of the game. Thank you guys, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, Zelda is dead now. The bad guys won. And he's gonna check the chest. Oh! There is nothing in there. Hmm. But a rabble of monsters. What is the meaning of this? I know the force I'm after is somewhere out there. Now see, this is the funny thing. It, it, this is <laughs> going to be spoilers for the game. But he just explained what... And I'm not going to like d define it per se, but he just said point blank where the thing he was looking for is. It, just, it makes no sense to me. But, you know... We gotta have this game stretch out for more than about eight minutes. Alright, so we have woken up from most likely what was our concussion and everything. And here we go, holding a press conference and everything. Oh, Link, you're awake. Are you feeling alright? Stand by my side. The King of Hyrule is about to speak. You know, this is, you know, what a way to end 2020 here. It's obviously not 2020 when this gets posted. But you have your leader here, and then you have a person standing next to him, I'm assuming. 
uh, assigning it, as we have been seeing for the last year. He's talking to us. Uh, talking about the Picori and everything. They're not a fairy tale. They are real. I got some more. Nobody outside of the royal family knows the truth about them. Th this is the, like saying, yeah, Santa Claus is real. Hey, and only somewhere deep within the Tibetan mountains do the monks truly know. Then we must dispatch the soldiers there at once. No, soldiers will not do. The Pekori do not show themselves to anyone but children. Oh god, I know where this is going. Hey Link, you're a child, right? You wanna do something for us? Save the queen, her princess, and save Hyrule for Mr. Krabs. Take the sword along with you and the Pecori Blade. Yay! Take the broken Pecori Blade. That just got blasted out of the chest and everything. And then we got the Smith Blade that we were supposed to deliver, but now we can actually use it as a sword. This is, you know, Last time we got a sword and from our family member, it was our uncle, and he died immediately afterwards. Take this map with you. If you get lost on the way to the forest, simply check your map. Start and then LRR. Good luck. Yay! There we go. And of course, uh, as we go through each other area, the map will fill itself out. Only you can break Vati's curse and free Princess Zelda. Uh, the uh, responsibilities of a 12 and 13 year old boy. I mean, you would think that in reality, if this were to ever happen, the guards would go with him and they'd just be like, okay, now, you go shuffle along, Link. You, you go in, talk to the Picori and everything, and then come out and we'll deal with everything else as the time goes on. But alas, that is not the case. Alright, so we have to go southeast. Yes, that's how directions work. Alright, the first enemy that was released from the. Ooh, well, I don't even need that. I have a tendency to impulsively pick up all the things that the enemies drop, especially if I don't need them. I, I have no idea how to stop. Oh, come on, you block this off and everything. It's construction because there was an explosion. So we'll just continue this way. So like I was talking about with those tree branches, the swords there, once they're cut down, they're cut down permanently, so we don't have to do it again. Let's see here. And one rupee. Don't spend it all in one place. You literally have to. There's no way to break it up. You have to spend it all in one place. And there's probably going to be like, one place that we end up spending it at. So the uh, beetle shop later on. One of the most god awful side quests. Alright, here we go. This is the Minish Woods. Um, as we will find out, uh, the Minish is the true name of what the Helians have been referring to as the Pakori for centuries. You know, it's. Something like that is bound to happen after meeting a mythical tale. Just kind of getting it things misinterpreted and everything. Alright, so what we're going to do is you have to come over here and up here and then we get the call for help and everything. We get the cutscene to this guy. This is Ezlo. He is the Navi of the games. Despite the fact that other games have come out before that with assistance, or after that with assistance, everybody refers to them as the Navis of whatever game. Uh, he's not the most annoying, and here's the first heart piece, by the way. Uh, he's not the most annoying. Definitely not my pick for the top five, but definitely not as bad as Navi was. Alright, so let's go here and save him real quick before we go ahead and jump into the dungeon. Uh, the dungeon, for the first one, it's pretty easy, I'd say. Uh, definitely not anything to write home about. Hey, get you there! Hey, don't just stand there. Do something. Ow! What's wrong with you? Do you like watching me take this abuse? Okay. And 
that's an Octorok down, and that's the other Octorok down. Woo, well done, that was close. Not that I could handle them, couldn't handle them myself, but that's beside the point. What in the world, world is a lone child doing so deep in these woods? Oh, I see. The Pakoi! You say, and Bati? Bati's cursed somebody? What? The Sacred Blade? Is that so? Hmm, I see, I see. You know, you and I have quite a lot in common. You see, I too am on a quest to break a curse of Vati's. You say that reforging the sword, blade, sacred blade is the only way to break its curse. I'm Eslo, and it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Alright, we're just going to skip through this dialogue real quick. Basically, he's just saying, Ah, I am too slow, I can't do this. And here we go, here's the excuse to go ahead and hop on our head and give us the yellow cap that we're so used to in his other game. And he, you know, he doesn't, oh, I love this song. Uh, he, he honestly doesn't talk much. Um, it's mostly his dialogue that makes him annoying, more so than his programming himself, really. Hold on for a moment, my boy, you've stumbled across something important. See, the world of the Minish is very small, and you're far too big to meet them now. Yeah, who are the Minish? Ah, yes, silly me, of course, allow me to explain. You humans call them Bakori, but they, in fact, refer to themselves as the Minish. Strange how in the world of humans, only this forest has kept that name. Anyhow, uh, deep in the forest they built a tiny village where many now live. But if we're to enter the village, we'll have to make you a touch smaller first. Look at that. You see, at first glance, that appears to be a mere stump, yes? No, that stump is a portal used by people long ago to adjust their size. With my help, you can use it to shrink down to minish size, to stand on it, yada yada, and then to come back. Ta-da, let's do this. Uh, this was really a lot of fun to see for the first time many, many years ago. It really does introduce a really cool dynamic of a second world, almost, to uh, the Zelda games, because later on with the dungeons, and even with other parts of the map, uh, we have to explore it first as normal size Link, and then afterwards as Minish. And it just, in my opinion, is one of the cool things. Oh, I'm totally messed up there. Alright, let's hop on one of these pedals. Let's hop here over here. Alright, let's take a quick second here. Alright, so let's see here if we can go ahead and get through the village first before... Well, I want to try to at least get through the village and the first dungeon before we call it quits for the, today. Let's see here. So this is the Minish Village. It appears we have found the Minish Village. Yes, indeed we have. I don't know. This is one of the games I would love to see remastered. Uh, especially after what they did with Link's Awakening, I think it was just fantastic. Yeah, there's been quite some time since the last saw human. You, you did understand- oh, yes, that was the language of the Minish. That's a little different from the dialect I'm most familiar with. I'm afraid I didn't catch most of what they said myself, but perhaps there's someone here who understands your language. Uh, we should definitely look around. Alright, so let's go ahead and go north this way. Now, it's one of two buildings, I do not remember which one. And I would be horrible trying to speedrun this just because of this. But it's either this house here. I think it is. Nope. Okay, it's the other one. So that that's not Fastari, I don't think. I, they have names similar to that, but let's see here. That's this building. Hmm. I've never seen an outfit like that before. Are you a human? Oh my, it's been some time since any humans came here. My name is Fastari, and I watched the Abbey, as well as- oh, okay, so this is Fastari. As well as the Shrine to the North. You seem to be having some trouble with their language, don't you? Well, you could use a jabber nut. It will allow you to understand our tongue, and you should be able to find one in the Barrel House, just south of here. Okay. Thank you, we shall go do that. So let's go here and get us the jabber nut. Is it through the roof? It is. Alrighty. 
All right, there it is in the background. Let's go get it. This must be the jabber knife he was telling us about. Boom, fantastic. So now we're going to take this and go back to the first person that we had talked to. And he is, in fact, going to tell us to go back to the Abbey, where Fistari is. And it's kind of like a back and forth, everything, but... I really wish there was a... Oh, wait, that's right. I can do that. Never mind. Oh, you speak our language. It's been quite a while since we've heard outsiders speak our tongue. We have little to offer you in these woods, but please enjoy your stay. Thank you for your offer, but there's no time to relax. My name is Eslo, and this child is Link. We need to break a curse that has been cast on the Princess of Hyrule. To do so, we need to reforge the broken Picori blade. Ah, yes, and you've come here, hoping to have the blade reforged? Well, if that's what you're after, you'll need four mystic elements. And these elements are the crystalline forms of the energies of this world. Only by infusing the blade with these energies can a new blade be reforged. Here, give me your map and I'll mark you where the elements can be found. Fantastic. The earth element can be found in the shrine to the north of Historia's Abbey. Speak with him and he'll show you to the path. And then come back once you have the earth element. Seems simple enough. Alright, let's get it going again. Yeah, I completely forgot that we can roll. That's an important factor. Alright, talk to Historia. Yep. I need to go to the shrine. A vile beast have settled in recently. Be careful, it's quite dangerous. Alright, let's go here. That's where we got the heart piece. And so this is what I'm talking about when you have to kind of explore things twice. Uh, it's really cool. I honestly do enjoy this. Alright, let's go here. And welcome to the Deep Wood Shrine. There's something about there being monsters since I didn't. Yeah, well, we have a sword. It's going to be real easy. A Deep Wood Shrine is... I, I want to say it's maybe one of the easiest I have ever played in a Zelda game. Uh, a lot of the dungeons, un as fun as they are, unfortunately, don't have a lot to them, um, makeup-wise. It's, I mean, there are some that, you know, you really have to rack your brain on. And Minish Cap has some of that aspect, but nothing close to what the other games have by any means. Alright, here we go. I mean, as speaking with uh, Link's Awakening, you have that game which has a runtime that's pretty decent for what was a Game Boy game, and then you have this, which is a Game Boy Advance game, and it's not the greatest. Hey. Got something there. Alright, got that on fire. Uh, these puff stools cannot be defeated right away. I'm so used to pushing R for the shield. Okay, let's go over here. Alright, and back up here for the rest. As with most Zelda games, it's a block puzzle of sorts. Move that, and step there. Okay, we got the first part done. This will go ahead and allow for the barrel to roll. And then by rolling, it opens up new doors. We're gonna go over here. I'm not sure this is the right way. isn't. But okay, let's go ahead here. I'm gonna take this and pull it all the way back the first time. Because this should give us the compass. Oh, map. Okay. I like to at least try and get the dungeon map and compass in each dungeon, even though I may not need it. It's just fun to continue getting these items. Alright. So we got the path here and everything. We're gonna go ahead and push it over on the switch, kind of like we did with the statue. Thankfully, we don't have what it takes to break pots with our swords yet, because that would be kind of a nuisance. Here we go. Yes. Yeah, whatever. All right, so pull this one back. And I mean, thankfully, it's with this, it's not the hardest game, but at least we have Eslo to talk us through it all the way. So in case we ever messed up, we have Eslo, which can be brought up just by pushing select and everything. Let's see here, no, no 
tickets yet. All right, let's do this and let's go over there. So we see that other heart piece there. We're gonna come back for it later. There are two, I believe, in this dungeon. Let's go here. And we'll come back over here. Come over here, unlock this door. Alright, let's go north. No, nope, I think that was a mistake. No, nope, maybe not. So let's go down. Aha, here we go. This is going to be the compass here. Okay, fantastic. Him, and then go ahead and push this over for later. We'll be able to come back through the uh, southern tunnel, not southern tunnels, but uh, the underground tunnels, more or less. And then there is the third card piece that we can get this far in the game. I have to go get another key real quick. So this is where we'll come over here. And now we're going to go south. Uh, fun fact with these is they do have these guide marks. That'll show you how far you have to go because it will eventually throw you completely off course. I don't know, there, there really isn't a lot to talk about this far into the dungeon, which is kind of disappointing. Uh, let's see here. Yes. We want to push this one over here because we're going to push the other one over here. Okay. I know. All right, let's go with these guys. They take four hits each. Two, three. Oh, this is it three. One, two, three. Oh, three. Never mind. And there's our key that we needed. All right. Now it's time to go fight the mini boss for this dungeon already, which is primarily the reason why I let this run longer is because it's not too long, but it's not short enough either to justify cutting it off. Come on here. So there's no uh, visible path to that heart piece there, but after we get the dungeon item, it'll show us how to do that. This one's really easy. You hit them in the nose and then just hit them in the tail. He's a, not wiggler per se, but, well, yeah, I wouldn't even compare him to wiggler, honestly. But definitely one of the easiest bosses, or mini bosses, I should say. There we go. Let's go ahead and stand here, just because it's fun to get pushed out of the way. And open this up. Alright, so this is what we're going to do here. Oh, is we're going to... Actually, here, let's... So like I was saying, with these things, this is what you can go ahead and do. This, now that we have that, suck them up with that. And we have to go ahead here and push a button. So we'll come back after we finish the dungeon and grab that, just because it has an entrance right at the... Or not an entrance, but a... Oh, how would I even word that? Essentially what it does is it has a teleportation thing right at the end of the castle. There we go. Okay, let's drop down here. And would you believe we're probably about 75% of the way done with this dungeon already? Now yeah, what? Yeah, we can travel. It's context, my dude. And also probably the fact that I've played this so many times in the last few months that it's not even funny. So we're going to come over here. And that... Uh, area that we put the pot on and everything. Oh, yep, needs the, the, that. Okay. That's what I was wondering. Alright, so let's go over here. And 
and we have a lot of opportunity here for this. So many blocks. Okay, here we go. Come on. Okay, so this is the room I was thinking it was. So, earlier when we put that uh, pot over on the button, it brought this chest up. And now we actually have the chance to come and get the rewards from that. And now we're going to go over to that other room that we saw that had that lock on it. Let's keep going. Uh, unfortunately, one of the bummers about Minish Cap is that none of the items that were introduced in this game ever came back. Like, I don't think there was a guest jar in any other games or some of the other items. Oh, let's go ahead and hold that on for a little longer. There we go. Now we can use the gust jar for this. Ah, damn it. Hold it from the edge there. And do it again. And lastly, we have this. Vicky! Right, it. So, this will go ahead and give us the red portal, much like the blue. It will take us back to the beginning of the dungeon. Let's go grab that heart piece real quick. That'll go ahead and fill up the hearts. And I think I ended up leaving a couple uh, treasure chests unopened, unfortunately. I can think of at least two off the top of my head, I'm thinking. Let's see here. Oh, three. Good grief. Ah, it's honestly just rupees. I'm pretty sure I might have to come back and check on that. Alright, let's go fight the boss. Uh, so, with this game, we have two uh, portals in each dungeon. A blue one that'll come right after you deal with the mini-boss, and then one that's semi-close to fighting the actual dungeon boss. And so we have the choo-choo, much like we were fighting as normal Link, but it, after shrinking down, comes through and he's... Not so small and easy to deal with after that. Alright, it's just... This is odd, thinking about just the goop falling from the ceiling. And then all of a sudden, the it forms into a choo-choo. So with this, we're just going to take the gust jar. Uh, go after his feet and everything, try to make him lose balance. After he does that, he's going to fall, strike him with the sword a couple times, wash, rinse, repeat until the dungeon is over. So the game tells us that we have to go to these areas to get these elements and everything. But when thinking about it, they only appear after you fight the boss, but the boss shows up right away in real time essentially so it's interesting that how they play it i think this is the only uh no well i think this is honestly the only dungeon that plays that card because essentially the uh, dungeon key that they offer us previously would have been used to just access the element. So I'll take that, no problem. Come on. Uh, whereas, we have to now fight bosses and everything. Which has always been one of the things that I've thought about when they have you go off and collect things in a Zelda game is that, well, were these dungeons, or were these bosses and everything always here? Were they bound to be here? Etc, etc. It's, uh, one of the ones that I do like, though, 
are the abdominal snow people in Twilight Princess, where essentially they inhabited that area, and it just kind of coincided. I think. I don't know, it's been almost a decade since I've played that. Should probably play that again, though. So now we got the Earth Element, and we got the first heart container. And let's get out of here. So this will go ahead and take us to the out, out, yeah, the entrance of the dungeon, and eventually we can go ahead and continue. But that has been episode one of Let's Play Minish Cap. I'm gonna go ahead here and try and get a couple more episodes done, and hopefully we can get this game wrapped up and finished after almost seven years of this being my profile picture. Cause my God, I'm ready to change it. See you next time.